wonderful Savior, we praise you. We adore you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy. Lord, we thank you that you have been faithful to us in uh, giving us the understanding of your word. Lord, you t tell us things ahead uh, of the happening because you don't want us to be disturbed, but to be prepared. Lord, the reason we want to hear this so that we can be prepared. Lord, those who are hearing on the Zoom meeting and those who, are, who will be hearing on the recording, Lord, it's our prayer that this will prepare every child of God who will hear. And many, we believe, are going to hear. Many will, will believe and will begin to be ready because time is running out. And every day we are coming closer and closer to the day uh, in which we will appear before the Lord. Well, the book is entitled The Revelation of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Father gave him and uh, he gave, his, uh, gave to his angel. Jesus, Jesus received it from the Father. And he gave it to his angel and he gave it to, uh, gave it to John, the apostle. And uh, he brought this to us. Marvelous book. Book about the revelation of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is the only one who can bring exact understanding. And this is not a closed book. Thank you, Lord. It's an open book. It is a revealed book. Actually, it's not just the revelation of book, but it's the revelation of our Lord Jesus. And right in the middle, he is revealed. He is revealed in a very special way. In his people, among his people. And he will be doing wonders. Lord, we thank you for this word. That uh, this gospel, you said, the gospel you were preaching. At that time, you were in, uh, in bodily form. You said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. And then the end shall be. Lord, this gospel is going to be preached as a witness. That simply mean it will be the kingdom uh, gospel, uh, gospel of the kingdom, and it will be preached to those you have appointed, O Lord, and they will hear, and they will turn to you, and they will come with you into that eternal reign. We give you the glory, Lord. Spirit of the living God, as always, your faithfulness we will see. Your faithfulness we will appreciate. We give God the glory for your coming and making things so simple for us so that we can hear and obey. And then we thank you for the obedient one whose name is the Lord Jesus Christ. That obedient one is living in us. And because of his presence in us, we have the power and we have the ability to obey. He obeys through us. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. So we commit this study in the hand of the Spirit of the living God. He can use any vessel that is uh, that is yielded, Lord, uh, as much as it is in me. I choose to yield, choose to surrender, that your people may understand your ways and be prepared in the name of Jesus. Well, this message is a message of joy and hope, because about this message, the, uh, the word of God says, Actually, these are the words of Jesus Christ. He said, when you see all these things happening, lift your head high because your deliverance is near. But we have been told ahead of time so that we can be prepared. So every word may fall 
on a good ground and we will be fully prepared for the coming of the bridegroom as uh, we aim to be the bride of Christ and bride will be spotless and without wrinkle and the Lord is going to see to it that this bride that only uh, only will be will be desirable to him will be prepared and if there will be some uh, some fire some trouble uh, that's called tribulation if that tribulation comes it will be to prepare the bride god will never uh, willingly destroy us whenever he allows something a fire comes or a water we go through water whatever comes or a sickness comes i believe our father knows everything and in his love he will make uh, this for the glory of god so god's people as i told you uh, this the scripture that we are going to study uh, that means revelation 11 12 and 13 they are in an orderly form one lead to another or i should say one causes the other to happen one thing happened and uh, there was some cause of this that mean uh, what happened previously prepared this uh, event so i'm going to start with uh, with chapter 11 revelation chapter 11 god's people if you've got uh, the bible open to you uh, let's open from revelation chapter 11 and starting from verse 1 we are living in such a time today that we need to be ready for this to happen in our lives. And this is not, again, a positional truth. This is a functional truth. This is something that has to do with function. And that has to do with what we will be enabled to accomplish. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. It's a reed un like unto a rod. It's a measuring stick. It is something with which you measure. The idea beh behind this thought is survey. Idea of taking possession. Someone buys something. It has already been bought. We are bought with the blood of Jesus and we have already been bought and now he is taking possession. So remember, the first verse will alert us. He is going to take possession of us completely. We are going to be his forever. We will be pleasing him for all eternity. So there is an idea of survey, survey uh, to take possession. Praise God. We are already, already his uh, prized possession because he has bought us with the, the blood. The precious, our superiority is not in us, but in the price that has been paid. It's a su superior price. It's a marvelous price. It's a wonderful price with which we have been bought. So there was, a, there was given me a reed, like a rod, and the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple. God today is measuring the temple. And the temple, of course, is not made up of brick and mortar. Temple he's talking about here is uh, we, is the church of the living God, is uh, the body of Christ, and uh, he measures it to possess it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We become something that can be possessed. It is not because of what we have done, what we have done. 
It is because of the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus enables us to be such that he wants to possess us. He wants to make us his own. Praise God. And it's going to be for all eternity. We will spend eternity with him. He said, he says to me, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and things that and them that worship therein. How can you measure someone who is worshiping? It's not the size of how fat he is. No, no. It has to do with the spiritual truth. It has to do with spiritual energy. It has to do with our walk. It has to do with our commitment to the Lord. It has to do with the consecration. It has to do with intimacy. It has to do with the, the stature or the measure of Christ. I've said so many things, and I believe you already remember it. We are not going to compare with one another or with any other child of God. We are aiming to be to the stature to the stature are the measure of Christ. This is written in the scripture. Uh, all the pastors, all the preachers, everyone is, uh, is there so that we can be uh, measured in Christ. Uh, it is written in Ephesians. Let me read it to you. It is the measurement. We are getting ready every day. We must grow because day goes, day goes, and we cannot bring it back. Whatever we have achieved in the Lord and his power, that will stay with us. Whatever we have allowed him to do through us, that will go on. And it's written that all these ministries, pastors, preachers, uh, they are there. Uh, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. I'm uh, just reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. For what? For the perfecting of saints. Saints of the living God, it is a time to be perfected. Holy Spirit is so eager to bring this, this perfection to us. All we need to do is to give heed to him. All we need to do is to think of intimacy. Think of deliberately spending time with him. Living in communion with him. Living in union with him. And as we know, this is the union of life. What life? Not worldly life, not uh, suke life. That is ordinary life of human being. But Zoe, Zoe life is simply the divine life. It's the union of divine life. One life lived by everybody. One life enjoyed by everybody. And verse 12 says, And the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of body of Christ. Individually and corporately, we need to be edified. Every day, it is time for edification. We haven't got time to waste. And uh, this word till uh, indicates this is our aim. Verse 13, till we all come, till we all come in the unity of faith. Unity of faith. We are united in the spirit. We are united in divine life, and it speaks about the unity. It is inward unity. It is not outward unity. It is not unity that can be broken by the power of darkness. It doesn't matter how dark the things go. It doesn't matter how frightening the things look. Still, we will come to the unity of faith not by outward life, but by inward life. The life of Christ lived by many. 
till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. And don't you tell me, as many Christians tell, I'm not perfect. Oh, but you're on your way to perfection. Will you let the Holy Spirit to shape you every day? We, we need to show the world the image of Christ. And the image of Christ is what the Holy Spirit is shaping into. He's like, like a potter and we are just clay. And if we surrender, and if we will be pliable like good soil, then he will make into a vessel honorable to God, worthy of the master's use. And then every vessel who has become worthy of the master's use, he will, she will be rewarded well in the presence of the living God. Son of God, we are are going to be filled. We are going to know the knowledge of the Son of God because that's our purpose. Get to know him every day. Unto a perfect man, and then, that's what I was trying to explain to you, and unto the measure of the stature, uh, stature mean again is about unity, stature of the fullness of Christ. So fullness of Christ is what God is looking for. And in Revelation 11, God's people, as the time is drawing near, we see in Revelation two witnesses. That's what we see. This is the order. And uh, I may not read the whole chapter, but here uh, we read about two witnesses. We read about two witnesses, and they are mentioned in uh, chapter 2, the start, and they will be real men. Uh, people say they are Moses and Elijah. Some because of the kind of miracles they show for three and a half years. They will be real men. Just not to try to explain something that is so simple. They will be in Jerusalem. It is written very clearly. Chapter 11, if you read carefully, you will see that they are in Jerusalem. They are powerful as we see it here. It will not be ordinary, ordinary evangelism. It will be the gospel of the kingdom, God's people. We should not be thinking. Some people say that when Jesus comes again, they will crucify him. That's falsehood. It will not happen. He's not coming as a babe. Is coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has got vengeance in his heart, and his robe is dipped in blood. It's vengeance, God's people now. And I'm warning everyone who is under the sound of my, uh, my words, you better be ready, because he is not coming to forgive anyone who doesn't want to be forgiven today. And it will be the vengeance in his heart. Bible says that he has got a robe dipped in blood. And he will take vengeance from his enemy. Anyone who rejected him. Anyone who didn't want to know him. Anyone who did not want to avail from the sacrifice that he made for us. It's written here. But uh, it's, it says here, measuring... Now he is measuring the altar and the measuring uh, the worship therein. That simply means how honest is the worship. Because he is not looking for worship. Jesus said that God is looking for worshiper. It is people. It's people who acknowledge the lordship of Jesus. That simply is the worship. And actually the worship in the Bible is... Uh, uh, given so clearly, what is the worship? The worship is presenting my body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. This is my reasonable worship. Well, the translation is service, but the word in Greek is worship. 
He said, but the coat which is without the temple, leave out. Uh, he is measuring his own people because he is measuring them to possess them. He is measuring them to declare they are mine. So God's people, you remember, before the Antichrist comes in chapter 13, he has already taken measurement of his people. Can you see the order? And can you, can you see an encouragement in the order before uh, the Antichrist comes, before the hard days come, before the tough time come? God's people, he's already measured his own people, and he has got his eyes upon them, and nothing goes without his notice. Let's keep reading. And I leave, uh, and he's, they don't measure the other people because if they don't want to believe in God, don't want to believe in God. For it is given unto the Gentile, Gentile simply means unbeliever, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months. That is the period in which the Antichrist will rule. Not seven years. Don't you think that is seven years? Seven years is not given anywhere. If you read in these three chapters, uh, there are three uh, time, or more than three, three time, that time is measured by three, four ways. Uh, first way is here, 40 and two months, three and a half years. And then the next is, uh, is going to be 1,260 days. That's again, three and a half years. And then time, times and half a time. So that there'll be no, no confusion about the time. And God's people, though, the Antichrist will be given a measure of, of authority. But who gave this authority? Our Lord. And he knows how much authority he can use. I, we know how much authority will be beneficial for us. And that will be given to him. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. That's what I'm trying to talk. Uh, chapter 11 speaks about two witnesses. And my, what witnesses they are. They are not, uh, uh, they are not, uh, 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 kind of, uh, what do you say, uh, symbol, uh, they are real. They are reality. Uh, they are not uh, uh, a figure of speech. No, sir. It's not a figure of speech. Uh, it's not something that will not happen. It is something that will happen because the wording is very clear. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. God speaks about them. And they shall prophesy a thousand 203 score years, 1,260 days. Can you see three ways to measure the time is here? 42 months, and then it is uh, 42 months, and this is the second one, you know, third one will come. And uh, three score, that simply means uh, 1,260 days, three and a half years. So, if someone has told that Antichrist will make havoc for seven years, no, it's not what the Bible says. And I tell you, he will not be all over the world. There will be nations that resist him. Let's pray that our nation will resist him. Let's pray since the Brexit has taken place. Praise God, they're out of this uh, a uh, Roman revived empire that can be, uh, because when we see in Daniel uh, that stone that is cut without hand falls on the revived Roman empire. You remember the dream of Nebuchadnezzar? The head was of gold, and then chest was of silver. He was Babylonian king, and then chest was silver. And silver, of course, was Medo-Persian kingdom. And then it was bronze, that belly was bronze. And bronze, of course, is Alexander the Great. And then uh, two legs and the feet. Two legs were of iron. But the feet of this beast that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw 
for that day and for these days it will be repeated again the same day but the feet will be partially clay and partially iron iron doesn't mix with the clay and that stone that will be cut without hand will fall on uh, this uh, this the two feet made up of clay and iron and it will smither it absolutely and it will scatter it all over the world and that stone will become a mountain that simply mean the kingdom of our lord i believe you understand this is very simple and these are two olive trees olive tree what does it mean they are jewish they are called olive tree and it is also written uh, if i take you to zechariah chapter uh, chapter 4 and verse 1 to 6 you will read it about them you have got hint in the old testament about them so zechariah chapter 4 and verse 1 to 2 speaks about that very clearly and so god's people is one god's word prophecy is authenticity are the great proof of the authority of the scripture everything is foretold and everything has taken place and will take place exactly the way it is written what we have seen what i have seen so far and you might have taken note that it is it's precise like mathematical precision that's that's the kind of precision i have seen as a cry i'm just going to read it to you and the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is awakened out of his sleep and said unto me what do you see or what seest thou and i said i have looked and behold a candlestick of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof and two olive tree olive tree they are the jewish witness uh, they are the witness that god will choose and they will be mighty i tell you the world has never seen such mighty witnesses and they will be appear they will be real and two olive tree by it one upon the right side and the uh, of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof so i answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me saying what are these my lord then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me does don't you know what these are and i said no my lord then he answered and spoke unto me saying this is the word of the lord unto zerubbabel do you know what zerubbabel mean that word is very meaningful remember this word zerubbabel he was the governor who came from babylonian captivity to build the temple and the wall of jerusalem zerubbabel simply mean stranger in babel we are exactly zerubbabel we are not living in our our country we are not the citizen of this world we are just transitionary here just to be prepared for the next uh, next country we will be living in so that's why the word of god says absent from the body present with the lord so that is when the world calls it death the word of god says absent from the body and then present with the lord are to live for me is christ and to die again so zerubbabel is a very a very meaningful word that simply means stranger in babel we are also living in this world and that is a, a symbol or a figure of babylonian captivity but here we flourish before because of him 
as we let him live, we can live triumphantly, saying, not by might, not by power. So it's not going to be by your power. Don't you be worried when the tribulation comes. Don't you be troubled when the tribulation come. If it will be you, your power, you can be worried. But if it's not going to be by your power, it's not going to be by your strength. It is going to be by the spirit of the living God. Why do you worry? Why should I be troubled? Why should I be perplexed? He says, but by the Spirit says the Lord of hosts. Oh, the mountain. That doesn't matter what kind of mountain you're facing. It may be a little sickness. It may be a pain. It may be a habit that lingers on. God's people, you'll not be afraid of that. Why? Because who are you? You can say, even now, if you're facing any problem, you can speak these words to them. Who are thou? Oh, great mountain, before Zerubbabel, all you need to be a stranger. All you need to have the attitude of Zerubbabel. Stranger in Babel. All you need to have this attitude. And then it says, oh, great mountain, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone, that's Christ Jesus himself. Therefore, with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. That mean enablement. That mean empowerment. You are supposed to receive the power, the amount of power that you need. So God's people, these people will be mighty, mighty in the earth. and. Uh, uh, they are also candlestick, and candlestick, of course, is the church. Church will be mixed up with them. Uh, but I'm not sure 100%, but with most of the theologian, I agree that it, it can be Moses and Elijah. I have uh, another certainty of this because when they appeared to Jesus, uh, you know, on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, Moses and Elijah, they saw talking to God, uh, talking to our Lord Jesus, and they were talking about his coming death. Uh, they were talking about this uh, magnitude of the sacrifice he is going to offer for the world. Okay, let's move on, please. These are the two olive tree, the two candlestick, olive tree and candlestick. That simply means the church and the Jewish believer. They are one. Uh, he has made them one. He has uh, uh, just destroyed the wall that separated them. It's written in the scripture. Standing before the God of the earth. And this is the kind of power they're going to display. Nobody will dare to touch them. Nobody will dare to kill them. Until they have done the full will of God. Until they have completed what work they have been given to do. Nobody has the power to touch them. God's people, that's a great comfort to me. My God sees everything. He is omnipotent. Omni, omnipotent. He is omni, omniscient. He is uh, he's omnipresent everywhere. And uh, he can be uh, everywhere. Everywhere in one go. And I don't have to be worried about these things that the world worries about. God says, don't call it conspiracy, that the people call it conspiracy. I am with you. I am in control. I am on the throne. And I know my own. Verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour the enemy. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. And I tell you, when it will be in Jerusalem, when it will be in Jerusalem, the display of the power of these two, two, two prophets of God, and the prophecy of God simply is the testimony of Jesus. It is written in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10 that the prophecy simply is the testimony of Jesus. Now, these are the power, uh, you know, uh, verse 4, 5, I was reading. 
And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. It's going to be real. It's going to be the reality. And these things are not far away. They will happen. I'm not setting any time, but they will happen. Not in, uh, in centuries coming. No, it may be years, not centuries. I, this is what I believe. These have power to shut heaven. That's why people say, well, uh, it was like Elijah, that it rained not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with the plague as, of, as often as they will. They're not the will of God. The will of God is operational in them. They are not moving in their own power. It's not by power. It's not by might. But by my spirit, says the Lord, that it is at work in them. And when they shall have finished their testimony, no one can touch them before. In the same way, nobody could touch them before because his hour had not come. They sent the soldier to arrest him. And they came to him, but they couldn't touch him. They went back and the officer asked them, why did you not bring him? Do you know what the answer was? No man spoke like this man. But that's not the, not the reason for the soldier not to rest. But there was power in these words. And nobody could touch my Savior. Nobody would, could touch my Lord until his work was accomplished. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast, the beast, that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. That's what will happen. That is exactly what will happen. You may see it. It's not going to be far. And that may happen. These things will happen in the world. This is what I can guarantee you. I can, when? I'm not sure. But it's not far too. And the dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Now there is the indication of what that great city is. They will not be everywhere all over the world. Well, they may have some photograph of them on the television or in other places from Jerusalem, but they will be in this city. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. This is used for Jerusalem. Uh, Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now it's very clear. Sodom and Egypt may be clear, but then where our Lord Jesus was crucified, and that is the place, Jerusalem. And, and they of the people and kindred and tongues and nation shall see the dead body three days and and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put to put in their grave. And they that dwell on the earth, that but dwell on the earth doesn't mean all over the world. It's talking about the area they were they will be they were living. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. They can't send gifts on the aeroplane to all the world. It is an area thing. It is a location. It's a location where they were. And we have read that they were, that was Jerusalem. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And I'm simply sharing with you in faith, as they will be busy doing wonders in Jerusalem, God's people all over the world will also be busy doing wonders with the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ himself working through them. And after three, and, three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. First, they have been seeing them for three and a half years. They are already... Uh, the fear of these men was established in the heart. 
Now there are a few more things happen and out come men and women, men I believe, uh, that, that are mentioned in chapter 7 of uh, Revelation, I believe. These one, 144,000 Jews, and they will come with the power that the world has not seen before. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in the cloud, and the enemies beheld them. They saw it, and they were awestruck. They were really enjoying the fear of the Lord, and they were giving him praise for all these things these two men have been doing. And the same hour was there. Uh, there is a great earthquake, one after another happening. The bodies are going up. The same, uh, same hour, the great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. That was a mega earthquake. And in the earthquake were slain of men, seven thousand. And the remnant were affrighted. They were frightened and gave glory to God of heaven. They have been, they've, they've already been prepared. Three and a half years. They've been seeing the power that was at work in these two witnesses. The second woe is passed, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. And the seventh angel uh, sounded, and there were great voices in heaven and heaven saying, Now, their prophecy, their death, their resurrection, the voice coming from heaven, and all they've been seeing, out of all this, I believe 140,000 come out, and they come out for the glory of God. And uh, I think this is, this is what is written here. When such group comes, that will be invincible, that will be powerful, that will not be using maybe uh, natural transportation. They will be using Philip's transportation. You know Philip's transportation? The Spirit of God transports them from one place to another. At one time, you will be in Russia. Next time, you will be in Indonesia. Then you can be in another part of the world. Then you can be some other place. God's people, this is the way it is going to work. And the heaven and the seven angels sounded, and there were great voices and voices in heaven saying, and these are the voices. The kingdom of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord. It's going to be powerful evangelism after that. And of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Praise the Lord. So the result of these two witnesses mean 144,000 mighty men of God from the 12 tribes of Israel. And then at the same time, in chapter 12, we have not been, we have not gone there. But in chapter 12, we see a remnant, a man-child, commissioned by God. I want to be a part of this, won't you? Won't you be prepared to be part of that? I want to be ready when uh, it comes and I want to be a part of this remnant. It's not going to be a lot of people, but it's going to be a matter of choice. Matter of choice and getting ready. And, uh, and, then, I, and then we read it. And the four and twenty elders, we saw them in the beginning, we see them again, which sat before God on their seat, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. It will be for reigning, it will be for ruling. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servant, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, 
and should destroy them which destroyed the earth. Don't worry, it is not going to be the Green Party that will, dis- that will save the earth. It's going to be the people of God that will save the earth. He cares for the earth. They can't care for the earth. They can't save the earth. And all these environments and all this, God can take care. He made it. He loves his things. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there was lightning, and the voices, and thundering, and an earthquake, and great hail. That will be a great display of the power. God's people, what we have seen, let me uh, briefly tell you. We see two witnesses for three and a half years, the witness in the power of the Spirit of the living God. Nobody could touch them. When they had finished their work, the beast that came out of the bottomless pit fights with them, conquers them. The dead body are seen in the street of Jerusalem, maybe through television all over the world. And then three and a half days, three and a half days, a voice comes, come up, and the spirit enters them and people saw them. And they saw all these, and when they were going the same hour, there was an earthquake. And a tenth of the city was gone. 7,000 people died. All these people uh, put a holy awe in the hearts of the people. And out of that, I, I understand. If I'm wrong, God will forgive me. But this is how I understand. 140,000 mentioned in chapter 7 of Revelation. They get ready and they come out to minister in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's people, there was earthquake, there was noise, there was thundering, and there's declaration. I want to read it again. This is what is declared. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. So rejoice. Rejoice, people of God. It's going to be glorious. It is going to be triumphant. Exactly the way he declared triumphant cry. It is finished. We will leave this world triumphantly. Let's pray. Let's pray as we rejoice every day in the hope of this kingdom of God that will be established right on this earth. Kingdoms, those who do not know him, we simply appeal to the Spirit of the living God. We plead with the Lord that their hearts will become tender and they will come to the knowledge of God. They will ask or receive Jesus in their heart. He will come and he will establish his kingdom in them so that they will be prepared for his eternal kingdom close to his throne. Father, we thank you for this hope that is steadfast, that is real, that is as real as anything we see in this world and more we shall see, Lord. We thank you. Teach us to be committed. Teach us to be consecrated because time is short. We haven't got time for much entertainment in this world. We have no time for anything that has nothing to do with eternity. But we have got just time to be prepared for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.